Don't be silly, there are no records about us. <laughs> Actually, there's like 200 I years worth of records smoking. that are just sitting there. <laughs> there's nothing about us. <laughs> what are you smoking? Hi, I'm Dexter and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things Caribbean history and genealogy. Thank you so much to all of you for watching my videos and, and sharing them and for sending me those amazing messages that you've been sending. It means so much to me and it really is giving me lots and lots of ideas for where I'm going to take the channel next. But something else has got me really buzzing today. A fully indexed version of the BVI Methodist Church records spanning 1815 to 2012, they've just been released. But before I jump into it, hit that subscribe button. So, what records are these, you may ask? Well, I'm a born and raised Virgin Islander with roots going back there 300 years. And if you thought that there were no records about us, you'd be wrong. Not only is that a myth, it's a bull-faced lie. In my video about Caribbean genealogy myths, I dispelled a number of misconceptions about researching your ancestors in the West Indies. But this thought that no records exist, it's one that is very hard to shake. When I started researching my family's story, I didn't know what I was doing or where to look, and I found family search and went through all of the information that was there and found that, yeah, there were, in fact, you know, quite a number of records available that were spanning 200 years. I was so excited to see the records were, were there and the images as well were available until I realized that the records, they were not indexed, i.e. they were not searchable. So a painstaking process began with me manually going through hundreds and hundreds of pages of images to try to identify grandparents, great-grandparents, so on and so forth. And it then required me to make a whiteboard and I had all of the family clusters here and there. And then I was then triangulating the different family groups generation by generation. And I mean, this was like a CSI level type of analysis that I was doing. With this latest release of records, all you've got to do is search. So I'll tell you right now that you need licks if you don't take this opportunity to research your family. And yes, I'm talking to you. So who were the people that made these records? Who were the Methodists? So the Methodist Church is a non-conformist Protestant Christian religious denomination. This started as a movement in England in the 1700s. John Wesley and his younger brother Charles, they started a club called, imaginatively, the Holy Club at the University of Oxford, whilst John was a fellow at Lincoln College. This was in 1729. The founding members of that club, they later became followers of what became known as Methodism. And this name comes from the fact that the individuals that were taking part in this movement, that they were very methodical about the way that they practiced their faith and they adhered to a particular set of ways of doing things. So particular rules and a particular method. This included rendering acts of mercy and ministering to people from whatever part of society, including prisoners and the homeless. Because one of the fundamental beliefs of the followers of this Methodist movement is the act of the social gospel. This led them to establish hospitals, orphanages, soup kitchens, and schools. The movement soon broke away from the Church of England and spread throughout the British Empire and found its way to the Leeward Islands and in the Virgin Islands in the late 1700s. 
The Wesleyan Methodist Society, as it was known at that time, took Tortola by storm in the 1790s. More than one third of the 9,000 population of the islands, they were registered members of the Methodist Society. And what's very special about this is that the majority of the membership consisted of free people of color and enslaved persons. Letters from those early Methodist Society members described Tortola as being a Methodist island in 1796. This is particularly significant because the Church of England didn't rank Tortola as being a priority for having a church or sending a minister to, to be there. So there was actually no practicing organized religion on the island for quite some time because of this. So when the Methodist Society arrived in the 1790s, there was pent up demand for accessing um, religious teachings. Because prior to the arrival of the Methodists, the Quakers were doing something similar very briefly, but very significantly within the society. The Church of England didn't want to be left behind, so they eventually sent a minister and established an Anglican church in the Virgin Islands colony. However, membership in the Anglican church in the Virgin Islands colony at that time largely excluded individuals racialized as black within the slave society. So the Methodists were actually extremely progressive at that point in time and there are some letters that survive, one in particular that I can think of where people were thinking that, ooh, maybe this is a little too progressive because they were also bringing literacy to a previously illiterate population of free blacks and enslaved persons. But I'll leave that for another video. So I'll tell you a little bit more about what's inside the record set. So in the baptisms, these start uh, really consistently in 1824. There are a number of pages that are missing and there was a very bad hurricane during that, that, that period, which, yeah, I think the records, they, they just got destroyed. There's one single page from 1815 that exists. So. The records really start in 1824 for baptisms. The available marriages in the collection run from 1878 to 1934. The records of burials, they run from 1957 to 2012 in these records that are available. And there are other death records in the civil records. There are some civil records in the mix in the church records I'm not really sure why, but um, they're, they're in there. If you want me to do a video about the record sets in the Virgin Islands and explaining a bit more about what's available and where you can search for, for what and all that, leave a comment below and let me know. I'm wishing you well with your research. You need to, right now, create a free account at familysearch.org and go to the collection. I'm gonna leave links in the description for you and just, just get going or else I'm coming for you. Thanks for watching to the end. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps others discover my content. Don't forget to subscribe by hitting the red button as well and watch my video on the colonization of the Virgin Islands. See you on the next one. Don't be silly. There are no records about us. I don't know who told you that. It can't be true. And I know all of my relatives anyway, so I don't need to do any research.